everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Wanted to come in and do a video for you today. I got uh, an interesting email to uh, this last week. It was from uh, one of the subscribers or listeners. And uh, he sent me um, a video, or it was a YouTube video, of a guy by the name of Dr. Scott Johnson. And who was trying to expose the Hebrew Roots movement, the heresy. You know, it's the same thing with the Stephen Anderson type stuff. But uh, this was like over four hours long. And... Uh, I get these all the time. People send, you know, videos like this all the time. Hey, Zach, you know, check this out and, and do like you did with Steven Anderson and, you know, and, uh, you know, do a, a retort on this or whatever and uh, and comment on it and do a video on it. And I get, I get these all the time and I, I just wish I had the time to do all of them, uh, but I don't. But this one was interesting because this guy was making an argument I had not heard before um, and really out of left field. Uh, I had to listen to it. Well, I, I got about I got about halfway. I got about two hours into it before I gave up. And I still may go back and listen to it a little bit more. Uh, but I was listening to it while I was doing other things in my headphones and just kind of, you know, making note of some of the craziness and silliness that I was hearing from him. But he was make. I mean, he made an argument that was, wow. I mean, somebody started to really amp up, you know, the attacks on people who call themselves Hebrew Roots or Torah um, and he was making a lot of wild accusations. You can find this online, uh, Dr. Scott Johnson, um, and I'll, maybe I'll include a link to his video below here in the description. But uh, it was really, he, he actually accused those who were Torah, those who were following, trying to follow Torah, those who are trying to follow the Hebrew roots with being messian, or not messianic, uh, Masonic Satanist. Uh, let me see what he said here. Uh, I think I have it here. Uh, Freemasonry Satanist. Wow. I mean, that's pretty, you know, I mean, I've heard some really strong accusations against those who of us who keep Torah, but this is really, that's the first time I've heard people, someone who follows Torah with someone who follows the Freemasons, you know, or has messi or Masonic Lodge, you know, connections. I mean, and as someone like me, you know, who has, uh, you know, studied a lot of the satanic connections with the Masonic Lodge and the Masons and Freemasonry and all that stuff, uh, the Scottish Rite, and I, you know, really delved into that and explored it uh, for the point of research and seeing some of the connections it has with the occult. Uh, it was really boggled my. I really had to hear the argument for some for someone who would equate Torah with Masonic teachings or. Masonic doctrine or Freemasonry. I was, just kind of, I, was just, I was just kind of blown away by that. And I mean, it was really um, a stretch how he made these comparisons, but he so much wanted to demonize what the Torah is and what, and what we, what we're doing here in this movement uh, that he even went that far. And I could see, you know, I mean, I, it was just an audio clip is what this video is, but I could see the people, you know, the sheeple in the audience probably go, looking up at this guy going, you know, and taking it all in, unfortunately. Anyway, I just, one of the things he said, and there was a lot of things, I mean, I could do a video. I mean, it would be, I could be doing a whole nother, it was a four hour presentation. I could do another, you know, 500 videos on it. But, uh, I was, one thing kept up, you know, I may do, I may, I may do that. I don't know. I mean, I may go back to this guy and I, I sent him an email. I sent him a message and I said, Scott, you know, Dr. Scott, Dr. Scotty, you know, hey, come do, let's do, let, maybe you can make your argument on my channel. I think he had like 600 uh, subscribers on his channel. Um, I've got 10,000 plus. Come on my channel. We'll talk about it. You know, we'll, we'll do a debate. We'll hash some things out and we'll, we'll, we'll just give us a different point of view. I'm sure many of the people who subscribe to my channel would love to hear your point of view on this topic. You know, come on. I haven't heard back from him. I, it's the case. You know, it is with a lot of these people who want to, who, you know, who espouse this stuff. They don't want to get, in, they don't want to hear or have it presented back to them, you know, a, a different point of view. So anyway, it, well, well, one thing caught my, caught my attention. And I wanted to just go ahead and bring it up because I do hear this. One of the things that people who do follow Torah and follow the Hebraic roots, uh, you know, we're going back and reading the words of Moses and re and understanding once we understand, have a good foundation and understanding, or at least a better understanding of the Torah and, and some of the writings of the prophets, uh, we go back and read the New Testament and this entire new world opens up to us of the meaning of some of the words of our Messiah and the writings of Paul and, and the apostles and, and, the, and the disciples and, and some of the parables. 
the, the, the vast richness of the meanings of some of these parables open up to us where we didn't have understanding before because now we understand Torah. We have a foundation. We have a good understanding of the beginning of the book that the end of the book means so much more to us. And so uh, I wanted to go back uh, to, to something he mentioned because he called the Torah and some of the things that we, the people who follow Torah are doing as Jewish fables. He equated Jewish fables with the Torah and some of the, like the feast days and the Sabbath and and the kosher laws and the clean food not really kosher laws but just things that are clean and unclean and so he equates that with Jewish fables and I've heard that a lot from people who do not have the proper understanding uh, that some of us have now you know figured out and so what he's what he's talking about is Titus chapter one verse fourteen let's read it not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. You know, whenever someone accuses people who follow Torah and the commandments of giving heed to Jewish fables, they just say it as that. Oh, you're, you're just following Jewish fables. God said not to do Jewish fables. It's very clear in the New Testament that we're not supposed to be doing these Jewish fables anymore. You're adhering to Jewish fables, Zach, don't you know? But they never read the entire verse. The entire verse says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Let's examine, there's three, really three sections there. In, in the written in the English, I'm using the King James here, there's two commas that separate these, this, this sentence, this verse, into three parts. Number one is not giving heed to Jewish fables. Let's just take that for a second. Are you equating the words of God as given in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, that Moses wrote down as, to, as instructions to be given heed to for the rest of our generations, for all your generations, are you equating that with fables? Fable? What is a fable? Something that's made up? A mis a mystery? Something that uh, a legend? Uh, you know, a story? Is it just a story? Is a st I mean, that's what the problem with most of the Sunday school classes today is that you know the Noah's and the it's just a great story. The flood of Noah. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story. You know, the Adam and Eve in the garden. Great story. That's a good story. You know, what can we what can we get from it? You know, what can we glean from it for some meaning? You know that whole Moses thing? Yeah, great story. The most walking through the Red Sea, separating the waters, great story. And Hollywood has taken that approach. I mean, you've got these movies out there, we've you know, the Exodus, Gods and Kings, and you know, Noah and that whole crazy movie that came out. They're just great stories. You know, fables. You know, you're not supposed to take it seriously. Come on, Zach. But, you know, that's what is. are you equating the words of God, the creator of the universe, with fables? Things that are just made up, legends. I don't think so. What did our, what did, what did our Messiah say? Messiah said, hey, I come not teaching my own doctrine, but of the one who sent me. And he says in Luke chapter 16, at the end of the chapter, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced by one raised from the dead. If you hear not. Moses and the prophets. That's some pretty strong words. That means you should probably go back and read Moses and the prophets and see what they said. You'll find that Moses and the prophets and our Messiah all had the same story. They all had the same message. Come back. Repent. Turn back to the commandments of God and, and turn away from the traditions and doctrines of man. Whether they be Jewish traditions and doctrines of man or Christianity's traditions and doctrines of man or atheistic traditions and doctrines of man, it doesn't matter. Turn away from the, the worldly commandments, the traditions and doctrines of man and turn back to the commandments of God. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. To repent means to turn. And so, and, and that's equa it's equating Jewish fables which are which over and over again in Mark chapter seven, for example, the washing of hands was a, a Jewish oral tradition. It was a, it was a law, a commandment not found in the Word of God. It was something that man invented. And so, what did our Messiah says? You hold to the traditions and doctrines of man over the commandments of God. You're giving heed. Let me let's read it. It says here, right here, Mark seven. Verse 7, Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such things ye do. Folks, there's nowhere in Torah where it says you have to wash your hands before you eat. It's a good practice. You know, it's a good, good hygiene practice. But the, what they were doing was a symbolic and a ritualistic washing of hands over and over again before they ate. Washing a, sim, a symbolic and ritualistic washing of pots. 
See, these things are not commanded. And they were putting these traditions over the commandments of God. And that's what it's talking about when Jewish fables. These Jewish fables, all kinds of Jewish fables out there. You can read the Talmud and see, you'll find all kinds of Talmud, Talmudic uh, fables. But they're equated with the commandments of man. And so that's what the verse says. And let's, I mean, that, that's the commandments of man. And, but let's like, take a look at the last part of that verse, that turn from the truth. See, if you turn from truth, you're turning from Torah. Look at Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law, that word law there in the Hebrew is Torah, in Psalms 119, 142. And thy Torah is the truth. Okay, so if we're going to let the Bible define itself and set its own definitions, right here you will find the definition of truth. No other place in your Bible, no matter how hard you look, I can tell you right now, but go ahead and try. You won't find another definition of truth in your Bible other than the law, the Torah. The instructions the Father gives His people to keep for all their generations. And it's the same thing that all the prophets came to try to get the people, the God's people, to turn from the worldly ways and turn back to the instructions that the Father says to keep for all their generations. And in doing so, you will receive blessing. And if you don't, you'll receive curses. And so that's what we see Titus talking about. And so when I get a guy who's going to equate Torah with Freemasonry and the occult, oh, I, I, I guess, is the enemy ramping it up? Is the enemy feeling that threatened? Yeah, I, I would say yes. Um, but yeah, and it's going to get worse. Um, they're now equating this with the occult. Ouch. You're going to equate... The Torah, the Word of God. And I know some people out there in some of the fringe of Messianic Judaism who follow Torah also keep all these traditions and doctrines of man that our Messiah said over and over again not to do. I get it. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, make excuses for that. I know the Kabbalism and all that stuff is out there. But I'm talking about just the Torah. Because see, most of the movement that I, I know and the people I, I associate with in this movement... They hold the Torah as the Word of God as the ultimate authority. And yeah, some of this stuff is good in, you know, when it comes to historical writings and things like that. Um, you know, even a broken clock, clock is right twice a day, right? But just because a Freemason or a Satanist comes to me and says, night, night is dark and day is light, and I agree with him, doesn't make me a Satanist. Okay? But that's what this guy was doing. Dr. Scott Johnson was saying, hey, you know, if you agree with these Kabbalism and this, this Freemasonry on this stuff, and because they hold to some of the same truths that this Torah movement does, that they're one and the same. That's crazy talk. If a Satanist comes to me and says, night's dark and day's light, I'm going to agree with them. doesn't make me a Satanist. Okay? <laughs> but <laughs> it's getting crazy out there. It's getting crazy. But, all right, so but I want to give people an argument. When someone comes to you and says, dude, I think you're really kind of getting into the Jewish fable stuff. You, you're holding into these, onto these Jewish fables. You, you have to put this stuff into context, into perspective. Traditions and doctrines of man versus the commandments of God. What is truth? Truth is Torah. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And the Torah is the truth. The truth sets you free. All right, we're going to leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks. Thanks.